Hello everyone, Creedmore with Money.net coming to you with another trader's question. Well, we have recently had a lot of people asking about the new Money.net short interest data information. Well, a lot of people actually have no idea what shorting a stock is, so the next couple videos are going to be not only about how to short a stock, but what is short selling, and how to take advantage of both shorting a stock to the downside and how to identify stocks that are getting ready to have a short squeeze. Let's go ahead and break down a couple basic terms so you know what's going on. First thing is short selling. What even is that? Whenever we have a run up on a stock, there are certain brokers that will allow you to borrow shares. Now each broker has a limited amount of shares within their holdings that they can allow people to borrow. What you in turn do is you are borrowing the shares at a predetermined price and level, you pay a small premium for the right to sell those borrowed shares at this high price in anticipation that that asset will drop, at which point you'll be doing what is called buying to cover. That's the verbiage we use when we are closing that transaction. So we are selling high and buying low. It's the exact opposite idea of buying low and selling high that we are all pretty much familiar with. Again, just to reiterate, what we are doing is we see that something has run up on sentiment, news, high volume, whatever, and now we are expecting that asset to drop dramatically in price. So we are borrowing shares from our broker at a slight premium and then allowing that asset price to drop at which point we buy the shares back. The difference in between these two motions is what our profit is. We'll get more into risk management and profit detail here. Now, something to keep in mind is that you can short a stock pre-market as well because you are working with just the shares. You're not buying any form of options. So you are able to take advantage of some of the pre-market movers. Some brokers will allow you to short and buy back in the pre-market and some will not. The brokers that do not typically will require you to reserve shares and you'll pay a slightly higher premium for the right to short that stock, but not the obligation. Hypothetically, let's say you see some news coming out and you believe that once that asset runs high, that it is going to hit a ceiling and then sell off. Well, if the asset continues to go up and up and up and up, even though that you have reserved those shares, your opportunity may never come to fruition and thus you never utilize that reservation. A great concept idea is let's say that you book a hotel for a trip to the Keys, but something happens and you are not able to go on your trip. Well, that reservation you had, you just lost the money on that one. That's it. The best part about that, though, is you still had the reserved opportunity to take action if it was there. Given your skill level and the validity of what is coming through the news for the market is how you would determine on whether or not you should reserve the shares for a short trade. It's entirely up to you and your trading profile. Now, let's move on to the next concept with all of this is, how do you even get into it? One, you've got to find a broker that is going to allow you to short. Some brokers will, some brokers were not, and some will have higher margin requirements if you are going to short a stock. Sometimes they want you to pay 1.2 times price or 0.8 times the share price as a how should I say, loan from the bank to be able to cover that position. 
So while the shares may only cost you $2.90, as we see here on Redbox, when you total in everything, let's say it's $2.90 and then 0 0.005 per share for the right to short that stock, you could end up averaging out somewhere at we'll call it $2.85 or $2.80 once you've sold it. And that may confuse you for a moment, but remember, you're selling it and then you have to pay that amount for the right to sell it. So instead of selling at $2.90, once you debit out your cost to do that action, you actually only sold it at about 2.80 give or take you'll be able to run that math quickly and i would suggest putting together a small data card of okay if i plan on shorting this stock this is the average price that i pay for the ability to short this stock that way you can quickly figure out your risk management overall for that position now speaking of risk management Shorting is a bit more of an advanced trading style because we do have the possibility of unlimited loss. There are some horror stories, and keep in mind this is not the majority, but there are some horror stories of people only having $10,000 in their account and they go to short a stock, walk away from the rig, and while brokers do have in place safety nets, margin calls, that will try to liquidate your position to get you out before things are too accelerated, what will happen is there are just no shares to buy at a cheaper price. And these individuals have ended up owing their broker $90,000, $100,000, $120,000, even though their account only had $10,000 to begin with. When you short sell, you have unlimited loss potential. Now, that may have shocked you for a second. You may ask, well, how is that even possible? Keep in mind, when we do buy high or buy low and sell high, we're looking for this to go all the way up here. If we buy at $3 for easy numbers, if we buy at $3, then the only thing we can lose if this was to go to completely zero is that $3 per share. Well, when we're doing the inverse or shorting, we have sold that position at the top and we're expecting it to go down. Well, if it never goes down and it keeps going up, there is nothing to stop it from continuing to go up. At some point in time, you will have to buy back those shares to cover your position, regardless if you want to or not. When you enter a short trade, you're signing a small contract there that states you will buy back those shares to cover that position because you do not own the shares, you borrowed them to start that trade. And we must give back what we've borrowed. Alrighty, so with those terms and everything out of the way, I don't wanna scare you overall because shorting stocks can be a very, very, very profitable thing to do as long as you keep proper risk management. Now, you've heard the classic uh, one to two, two to four, et cetera, for how we are looking at a, a risk reward aspect. I personally do not like this because nothing that I've ever seen in the market has ever been directly a whole number, been directly, I'm going to risk 40 cent to make 80 cent. The market just does not work in that way. It's an organic thing. So how do we find and work with our risk management? Well, I'm going to go ahead and clear this off here. Something you're going to want to do when shorting a stock is A, what type of a run is it? Is this based off of technicals or is this based off of a sentiment news push? Typically, if based off of a sentiment news push, once the excitement dies down, that is where we can expect our short to begin. And typically, these are at what I like to call the flat zones in the professional world known as 
business zones or supply and demand zones. If you ever hear me mention look for the flat zone, they are all the same thing. They are a business zone. We can see here previously on Redbox right here, we had a lot of oscillation around the, let's call it 550 area for easy numbers. And we can see some high wicks at the $6 level here on the previous day as well. This lends me to believe that with this huge sell-off that we had in the morning, if the market was to recover, this is the region that we should suspect that trend to subdue. You may ask yourself why. Well, this is where everybody started. Shorts came through on the early market news here from the CPI information, and it drug the whole market down. We then started to see the entire market to pull back. Redbox is part of the, the queues. It's part of your tech sector. And we can see in here that we pulled our entire position right back up to those pre-market zones and then started to sell off. Well, Redbox as well, following that market trend, was able to push itself all the way back to those pre-market areas. So now you have your zone to begin with to say, if and only if I see price action press its way back to this zone, then I will look for subdued bullish volume, at which point I will enter a short on this asset. I will short a thousand shares and play that position down to, let's say, eh, let's say you short at $5, I will play that position down to $4.50. You may ask, well, why would I do $4.50? When we are looking at these low floats, these cheaper assets, and I want you to start with the cheaper things before you get into uh, the much more expensive stocks. Yeah, you, you got to start somewhere. Most of the time, these assets will react at one of two levels the half dollar area and the full dollar area. So, three dollars three fifty four dollar four fifty etc this is market psychology that has been taught for a decade upon decade upon decade well if we know for a fact that this is the business area where people are looking to transact at we can suspect subdued volume and increased volume at these areas, allowing us to have a planned target entry and exit so that we can build the idea of, well, if I only have this much movement to go, is it worth me paying the premiums to short it? Let's say you reserve the shares. It costs you $300 to reserve the shares, and then you're going to pay out that price as well to short the stock. So your net to even start the trade is $400. Well, you're already $400 in the red. If you short 1,000 shares and you move 50 cents, well, you made $500. You already had the $400, $500 profit, the net from that, a hundred bucks. Is that hundred bucks worth the headache? If yes, awesome, do the trade. If not, then you can go, okay, I need to look for something else. I hope that kind of gives you a better idea of how to look for those entry and exits. Now, a great way great way to keep an eye on what news is pumping is going to the money.net platform and using the short interest data when we see these big movements, but also keeping an eye on the flowing news, the running news that we have in there. That at moment news combined with that short interest data is going to allow you, A, how many other people are shorting this? Is this too crowded? Because remember, there's only a limited amount of shares that you can actually short. If it is very bullish news and you see that a majority of the asset is already shorted, you may not want to get into it because you can end up 
in what is known as a short squeeze. I'll get more into that in another video. But you're able to determine, okay, is there enough room on the playground for me to play? If yes, awesome. Get into the trade, run your risk management, and make sure to work with your thesis. Go through everything thoroughly. If not, that's fine. Have a coffee, move on to the next thing. There's always opportunity in the market and it's your responsibility to have the tools and trading plans to be able to trade those opportunities. Some of your largest traders at, out there know that for a fact, you can make money on the market going up or down. I personally love to play the shares on anything that is about 15 bucks and less. I really love the 50 cent to $3 area. Those stocks with a strong name and a lot of hype behind them, great things to be able to short because you can make a few thousand dollars on there with just putting in a proper amount of effort and risk management. No. I do not believe that you should start with any kind of weight when you're first shorting. In fact, something probably around five to 10 shares will be your best bet. That way you get used to having money on the line during this process. It is something that can be a little nerve wracking to begin with. So paper trading is gonna be your best friend when getting used to the motions, and then starting with small live money to get used to the way that these orders fill. You may have some slight slippage, you may have a little bit delay in your order data, etc. but you need to start small and test the waters so that you are able to take advantage of all of these market movements. Buying low and selling high, a great way to be an investor. Time over time over time, yes, stocks go up time over time over time. But that is no reason that you should have to sit on the sidelines because you just not do not know how to play the game. When we have these tools at our hand and this type of volatility in the market. So yes, it is a little scary at first, but with guidance from myself and everybody else here at money.net, you absolutely can learn how to short a stock. Make sure to check out our other videos as well on how to use the short interest module and how to plan a short trade. In the next videos, we're going to be going over a short squeeze and the short interest module so you can see how can I play the morning squeeze or how can I play both sides of the same asset in the same day. There's no reason that you should not be able to play the buy low and sell high and then be able to flip your position to sell high and buy low, doubling your opportunities. Again, it is always your choice to enter and work within the markets and nothing we say is financial advice. You need to make sure that you are keeping track of your risk management and that you're keeping track of each one of your trades as you learn to do this. It is crucial to have something to go back on and say, hey, why did this trade end up like that? What was my logic to enter this short trade? Was I actually entering at a business zone or did I just jump into a trade? You have to be able to keep yourself accountable, especially when you get into something as advanced as short trading. Alrighty, everyone. Well, that wraps up this video on what is a short trade and how to work with the information. Make sure to check out our other videos. Check out the links in the description below and make sure to ask us questions in the scalp pit. We're always in there doing live trades, giving information and trying to help educate you, your friends and your family around you to become better traders in the market and be able to capture all the opportunity that works for you and your risk profile. If you have any questions, ask us there. Feel free to email us. And as always, remember, your trades are in the history and I'll see you around. Stay green, peeps.